All right, in this video, we're going to raise the bar slightly from the simple surface materials we created in the last video. We're going to create some shader networks that are going to employ some procedural textures. That's right. If you remember from a few videos back, we talked about procedural textures. We told you guys that basically they are computer-generated textures that allow a user to go in and manipulate a set of attributes. And by changing these attributes, the texture that's generated will change in a, in a predictable manner. That's right, because they're based on mathematic algorithms. That's right. Now, in this video, we're going to be taking care of the texture for the back wall and for the uh, head of the microphone itself. We're also going to show you a method for placing textures upon a surface. Now, it's going to get into a topic that we're not going to get into very heavily, and this is UV mapping. Actually, we're not going to get into this topic really at all in this particular project. In the upcoming projects, we will be talking a lot more about texture placement on the geometry, but we're really going to need to... Uh, to put this texture placement node in the scene so that we can control how the texture is distributed across our back wall. That's right. So for now, just follow along, and we'll make the rest of it clear as we go. As a matter of fact, we're just going to be doing it for the, for the door, I believe, yeah. to make it match with the back wall. That's right, just for the door. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll begin by making the material for the back wall. So I'll go ahead and open up my hypershade. So rendering editors. I know where the hypershade is, really. And here we go. So uh, the hypershade is going to... <laughs> Allow us to put together some simple materials. <laughs> right. So I'll be creating this uh, a Lambert material for the back wall. And I'll begin by renaming that first thing. We'll call this capital M underscore, following our naming convention. And uh, we'll say back wall using the standard uh, Maya capitalization scheme. So from here... And of course, why did we choose a Lambert real quick? If you don't mind me interjecting. Oh, please. Go ahead. Just We don't want... A, a metal back wall you right. know, or a plastic back wall. We want it to be matte. So, I mean, after all, this is a stage, and the walls usually are painted some sort of right. dark black color. And we you don't want them to stand out. That's right. A production. Plus, if you hit it with a bright spotlight, <laughs> and then all the light reflects back <laughs> at the audience. That's Actually, that's what good. I was about to say, because uh, we're going to have the camera dead front of the scene, if you remember from our storyboards. Right. And if we light this up from a spotlight from dead on, we're <laughs> just going to have like this massive glare in our faces. So we're going to make a Lambert, so we have no specular highlight whatsoever. And for our color channel, we're not just going to step in here and designate a color. Now, I just double-clicked this to bring up the attribute editor. Uh, as I mentioned, we're not just going to open up the color swatch and pick a random color. We're going to assign a texture to this value. Now, to do this, there's a lot of ways you can go about it, as you guys saw earlier a couple of videos back. Let's Yeah, let's start from right there inside the attribute editor. We just click this map button That's right. on the far right-hand side, and it's going to give you the Create Render Node dialog. And from inside here, you can basically create any type of render node you can think of. Fortunately, we're already set up on the Textures tab because generally you're going to be plugging a texture into this particular channel. That's right. And uh, when you click any button in here, it's already going to be connected into this channel, so very convenient. I'll go ahead and click on Fractal, and we get a Fractal texture with a Place 2D Texture node. That came in automatically. We didn't have to do anything to it. So let's go ahead and make a few changes to this uh, Fractal texture. Go ahead and double click this, and now I'm in the attributes for the fractal texture, which is currently plugged into the material. Don't get the two confused. Now, underneath color balance, we have color gain and color offset. And what these two colors are really doing is controlling what our fractal actually looks like. You'll notice as I increase color offset, we get a lot brighter, because that's actually controlling the darker colors you see in the fractal right now. And then color gain is going to darken the whole thing up, because that's controlling the whites that you saw. So what I'm going to do is grab the, uh, the color gain, and I'm going to set its value way, way, way down to 0 .065. So it's really, really dark. In fact, if you look, this is going to look almost black. If you look at the material, you can only just barely make out any lighter it colors. It does indeed have some texture in it, though. But That's it's right. It's very, very low, very muted. It's going to be kind of like a stuccoed black wall. That's just right. anything we can put on there so that when we render, we don't get a perfect black back wall. So I'll go ahead and apply this to the back wall. We'll just middle mouse click drag, and we don't see anything at first because uh, we don't have textures available in the viewport right now. All right, we need to enable uh, texture hardware view, and that's done by just hitting the six key on the keyboard. And immediately you can see that this has given us a nice black texture with some sort of foggy looking yeah, uh, like a charcoal highlights. type. Really. Sure. Now, we also want to apply this to the door. We're going to assume this theater was smart enough to paint their back door black so the audience didn't see it open <laughs> yeah. up during a play or something. And we'll middle mouse drag this onto the door, and you'll notice something if you look really close. 
you'll see that the texture actually is flowing much differently on the door than it is on the back wall. That's right. It's a much tighter grain if you want to view it that way. That's right. And it's, it's actually now a uh, vertical grain. Let's go ahead and maximize the attribute editor <laughs> for just a second. It's a vertical grain now instead of the horizontal sort of look that we have on the back wall. Now, to fix this, I'm going to select the door itself, and I'm going to go under the modeling menu set. So if you're not already there, go ahead and make sure you're there. We're going to go under edit polygons, down to texture. Remember that uh, our door was a polygon cube, and we'll go down to planar mapping. Now, what this is going to do is project our texture in a planar method along our door. Don't worry about the technicalities of this. I'm going to use my middle mouse button, and I'm going to drag on this blue handle here in the upper corner, and then also on the red handle here on the side. And notice... He's th just scaling it up. That's really That's all right. he's doing. The texture is scaling on the door, and you can play with this if you want to and really see how the texture is responding. All I'm going to do is adjust these handles until the texture seems to line up in a similar method to what we see on the back so wall. It's pretty much the same size, if right. you will. And that looks really good right there. I mean, the the two correspond yeah, very that looks well. Yeah, really nice. So let's go ahead and go back to object yeah, mode. When you, when he applied the uh, planar mapping, basically it switched over automatically into a component mode. Also notice this. I wanted to bring this up earlier. Remember at the l end of the last video, we went ahead and applied a steel material to the doorknob. Now, our door itself is at the top of that hierarchy. Remember that the doorknob was parented to the door. And so what happened is we automatically applied that material to the doorknob as well. And that's a very good lesson to point out right there. And that is anytime you material something or texture something, right. always keep in mind the hierarchy. Make right. sure you just assign the upper level pieces the material first and then start working with the child level pieces. Absolutely. So what I'll do really quick while we're here is I'll grab the mic stand material, which fortunately is available right here in the corner of my hypershade, and I'll just middle mouse drag this back onto these objects. And done. Nice, quick, and easy. So with that, our back wall is textured. So now I just want to create a simple material for the head of the mic. We don't want to leave this as a, a perfect steel uh, look, if you will. So let's go back into the hypershade. I'll clear out my graph down here in the work area. So let's go ahead and click the little eraser. I'm going to be creating this out of another blend. In fact, I want it to look a lot like the mic stand. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of a trick. I'm going to reuse this material in a new way by duplicating it. So with this material selected, I'll go down to Duplicate or edit, duplicate, and we'll just duplicate the whole shading network, like so. So we get mic stand one. So it's an exact duplicate of what we had. I'll change the name over to M underscore mic head, like so. And now, it's already metallic, just like we established before. I'm just going to change the color by adding a new texture. So we'll scroll down to the cloth texture. Of all things, cloth. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Actually, it's going to look really cool. So we'll uh, middle mouse drag this on top of the mic head, and I'll come down to color. So it comes in already hooked up. We can go ahead and double click on the cloth. And I want you to go under the place 2D texture node. In fact, let me go apply this so you can see what I'm about to do here. If I apply this to the mic head, you'll see what we have. It actually kind of looks like the little uh, wire mesh that makes up the head of a microphone. We'll go under the place 2D texture node, and really what I want to see here is more texture. I want these to be smaller, and I want there to be more of them. So we'll go to repeat U and V, and we'll set this to 8 and 8, like so. And really that's all there is to it. So if I close my attribute editor, let's grab this, I'll press F to frame up on it. You can see that we have this microphone head look. So with that, we have textured everything that we intended to texture in this video. We've got the back wall all set up. We've got the head of our microphone in place using procedural textures for our shader networks. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks.